I was expecting him to be there, you know, because uh, we was in love when we decided to go ahead with this IVF, you know. But he showed signs, because when things is bad, he's gone, and then, you know, when he comes back, I always welcome him back in, you know. So by the time I realized that I chose the wrong man to father my child, I was already pregnant, you know. I was going through it by myself. I was struggling. I, got, I was going to food banks. Like, I was, you know what I'm saying, just trying to, like, make ends meet, you know, and this man left me by myself. All right, I want to stop you right there. I want to turn to you, Mr. Nettles, because this is a woman who you not only got pregnant, but who went through a significant hardship. What were you doing for her? I was sending her money. When she was asking, when she didn't have no food in the house, I will send her money when I could, because I do have three other children and myself. But then why have another kid if you can't afford another kid? Because she didn't, she didn't have no kids, and she, she said her time was ticking. I was just trying to be nice. Okay, but you got to step up then. Were you there for her emotionally? I tried my best, because where she stayed, it's about almost 80 miles. Um, I can say the first transfer, I was there. After the first transfer, we wasn't in a relationship. I was off. Okay. I didn't know she was doing another transfer. And then eventually she told you she was pregnant? Yes. Were you all in with her? I was. I okay. was all in. All into the relationship or just all into fatherhood? At the beginning, um, the relationship towards the end, just fatherhood. I tried to be there at her doctor's appointments. When I couldn't be there, the time that she went to her appointments was no way I could make it. Between okay. my kids going to school and me driving almost two hours to get to her appointment. He was not there. I was a high-risk pregnancy because I had lost a baby uh, seven years ago. So um, I had tons of appointments, you know, yeah. and he didn't start going to the appointments until, like, I found out that I was getting ready to lose the baby because I went to one appointment and, you know, my doctor, she checking me out, you know, I'm saying, uh, they checking the baby out and she was just like, she just asked me out of nowhere, she was like, do you want me to test you to, to see if, you know, if, if everything's okay? And I'm like, well, you know, I'm only seeing one person and we've only been intimate twice when I was pregnant. So I get a call the next day, and um, she's like, Miss Children's like, uh, you have an infection going on, and you need to get to the, uh, the pharmacy because you need to get this medicine because it can send you to preterm labor. When I hung up with her, I called him, and I'm like, what have you been doing? Like, you know, and he's just like, what are you talking about? I'm like, what have you been doing? Because the doctor just called me and said that I have an infection, and it can send me to preterm labor. Mind you, I'm already a high-risk pregnancy. Be like, I haven't been with anybody, and I'm, I'm already knowing that he's lying because this man, he would tell me to go sleep with somebody else when I want to be it's me because my hormones are really high, you know? Like, who tells someone that's carrying their child to go sleep with someone else? So I got the medicine, I took it, and then, you know, that's like when all the problems started. They're telling me, like, Miss Children, like, your cervix is starting to open. We can send you to labor and delivery, and, you know what I'm saying, we can just, like, get the process started. And I said, absolutely not, because I was not willingly, w willingly going to terminate my pregnancy to my child because I really wanted him and I loved him, so... Do you understand that a sexually transmitted infection at least may have contributed to the loss of the pregnancy? I understand, yeah. Okay, and is that from... Is that no. something that you gave her? No. So you maintain she must have gotten it some other way? Yes, positive. Positive. How do you know that? We wasn't talking. We wasn't talking for maybe a couple weeks. <sighs> I have no clue. All right, so, Miss Childers, I won't make you relive the difficult weeks, but it was a difficult several-week period. You ended up with a huge amount of medical bills. Yeah. Were any of those covered by insurance? No, because at that time, I wasn't paying the deductibles when I went on the LOA, and um, he wasn't helping me pay it, and then my disability hasn't kicked in yet, so it lapsed. But they were still taking me because they'd seen, like, the bags start bulging through the surfix. That's when they was just like, we're going to keep you until you have this baby. And I would call him and ask him, like, to come up there and see me, or, you know what I'm saying, and things like that. And he's telling me he's tired, and, and I'm in a hospital by myself. You know, I was so desperate to try to save my son. I asked him, can they just please just try to restart stitch my surface clothes because they said if I would keep him to like 22 weeks they could give me like steroid shots possibly save him like you know but um when I woke up they said that it was already too late so they took all his amniotic fluid out and this baby lived inside me for eight days with no fluid around him and I was in there by myself suffering nobody not him not the man that helped me get pregnant and, and you know, went to court. He told the judge that he was not the father of the baby, you know, and yeah. just sad, you know, and this is who I chose.